Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday night service. And uh, again, I want to emphasize how I miss you. Uh, it's uh, not so much fun preaching in an empty auditorium, uh, but I'm thankful that we have the technology to be able to do this. Uh, hopefully you had an opportunity to listen in to Abby and Justin's hymn sing, uh, either before listening to this or after or sometime during the day. Uh, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to take time after this to, to pray with your family. Uh, prayer is so important, and, and I want to emphasize that for us to get through the difficulties that come through uh, this virus situation, uh, we're really going to need to be men and women of prayer. And so hopefully you're developing uh, your prayer life. I want to emphasize even tonight uh, an aspect of prayer that I hope will be an encouragement to us. And I'm going to ask you to open your Bibles to Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. Now, of course, all of us have prayed about serious problems, and uh, possibly there were times when it just seems like God didn't answer. Maybe you're in a circumstance now where it just seems like you've been praying for years, and God has not seen fit to answer that prayer yet. And, of course, uh, uh, the question comes to our mind, well, should we continue praying about this particular issue, uh, even though it seems long in coming? And so Jesus tells this parable of the persistent widow to answer that particular question. The reason that Jesus told this parable is given to us in the very first verse of the parable. Uh, Luke 18, 1, it says, And he, referring to Jesus, spake a parable unto them to this end, for this reason, that men ought always to pray, and what's the last phrase? And not faint. That phrase, not faint, describes uh, our temptation to quit because we're tired or because we're discouraged. And that's our nature. It's that fight or flight uh, uh, response that we have to difficulties. When they become too hard, we want to get out from under them, and so we want to quit. Uh, certainly, we get discouraged. Certainly, we get disappointed. We live in a fallen, sinful world uh, where there are just injustices, there is suffering, there are conflicts that we deal with. And then we deal with a situation like this where, where we're told to stay at home and not uh, uh, socially uh, get together with people. And that can be very difficult. And Jesus' message in this particular parable is simply this, pray and don't give up. Pray and don't give up. And he begins the parable in verse 2 by, by introducing us to someone. Verse 2 says, There was in a city a judge who feared not God, neither regarded man. And so we have this judge. He didn't respect God. He was an ungodly judge. He had no respect for the word of God, and he had no compassion. He had no care for other people. And it seems like a terrible job to be in with that kind of an attitude. But this guy was not the kind of judge that you would want to have to stand before. Uh, he was not a nice person. Well, then we have this in verse 3. And there was, in addition to this judge, there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, this judge, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. Now, in Jesus' day, Widows were among the most helpless of all the population. And apparently after her husband had died, uh, some scoundrel had come in and tried to exploit her and actually did exploit her. And, uh, and we see the very same thing today. Uh, folks, the, the widows in our day are among the most exploited in society even today. Uh, when a husband dies, the vultures come in trying to, to get what they can at the cheapest price. But God said in Exodus chapter 22 and verse 22, ye shall not afflict any, any widow, nor the fatherless child. Now, the unjust judge here, though he had no concern for the plight of this poor widow, uh, he could care less uh, what she was going through. And then beginning in verse 4, it even says, and he would not for a while. And what that means is, is that there was a time that he refused even to listen to her. He would ignore her. He, he would not give justice in her case. He just didn't want to be bothered. Her pleas would, would repeatedly be met with rejection. But let me tell you something that she had in her favor. The fact was, is that she refused to give up. 
Uh, she, she continued to make her request before this judge because really persistence was her only resource. And sometimes God brings us to that point, right? We, we are so self-sufficient oftentimes that God has to bring us to the point where all of our resources are exhausted and the only thing we can do is to pray persistently. Well, that's where this woman was. Realizing that the woman was not going to leave him alone, we're told in verses four and five, but afterward he said within himself, though I fear not God neither or nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Well, then the Lord says this in verse six, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And what the Lord is saying there is give attention to what he said. Give attention to this circumstance and learn something about it with regard to your own prayer devotional life. Now, is the Lord here teaching us that, that we have to wear down God to get an answer or we have to nag him for him to answer our prayers? Of course not. Jesus is explaining this wonderful truth by contrast. Look at how he explains it in verses 7 and 8. God, Jesus says, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. He will avenge them speedily in his time, though he bear long with them. So there is the this issue of God bearing long, making us pray for longer periods of time. But know this, in his good time, it will be speedily answered when he wants it to be answered. And so what the Lord is doing here, he is comparing this helpless widow who is coming before a judge who doesn't want to hear her. He doesn't want to take care of her, yet he gives her an answer because of her persistence. He compares that to God's chosen ones who are coming before their heavenly father, their heavenly father who is actually anxious to hear from them. He is anxious to, to, uh, to answer their prayers. He's saying, if, if an unwanted, helpless widow can come before an uncaring, worthless judge and get her request uh, answered, how much more, how much more will God's children in whom he delights have their requests answered by him as they persistently pray to him. Well, we may ask if God is so anxious to answer our prayers, why do we have to be persistent? And let me make note of this. If you really thought of that, or if you have thought of that in the past, uh, that really is a revelation of something, folks. It reveals to us uh, a sense of immaturity in our own lives, because isn't that how our kids can sometimes be? Mom and dad, you say you love me. How come you don't give me what I want right now? Why is it that I have to wait? Why is it that you have to say no? That's how children respond to their parents. Now, there are at least three reasons why we need to be persistent in our prayers. And you can count on it that all of these reasons are for our good and ultimately for the glory of God. Uh, I do want to say this, though. God doesn't need us to be persistent to remind him of what we need. God already knows our needs. God always already cares about our needs. And, and God doesn't need us to be persistent for us to urge him as if he doesn't have time and we need to urge him to do it. And certainly God doesn't need us to remind or God doesn't need us to be per persistent to provoke him as if he's preoccupied doing something else. So why is it that we need to be persistent? Well, for our sakes, persistence reminds us that we need God, doesn't it? The woman in the parable knew that there was nobody but the judge that could help her. Persistent prayer reminds us that there's nobody that can help us but God. It reminds us of our own limitations and, and that there are things that only God can do. Uh, really, folks, everything that is done is done by God, but oftentimes we give ourselves credit. But sometimes God has to put us in a circumstance where, where we recognize there is no resource within us that can accomplish this thing. Like Abraham Lincoln once said, many times I have been driven to my knees because I had nowhere else to go. Sometimes God delays his answers to our requests 
to remind us that there are some things that only he can do. There are some things that only he will do to get us to have, to have a greater faith in him and to go before him more often. There are some problems that our families, our friends, and our finances just cannot solve. And persistent prayer just reminds us, I need God. And so, so that's why God bears long with us. He wants us to understand that we need him. But secondly, persistent prayer also refines our prayers. You know, when God delays in answering our prayers and, uh, and we, we pray more persistently, it helps us to really understand what our prayer requests are. It refines those prayers. Uh, persistent prayers help us to realize uh, whether we have a real need or not. If it's really a need or it's just a passing whim that will change with our circumstances. Uh, a good example of this, I believe, is found in the life of Elijah the prophet. You remember how uh, Elijah challenged the 850 prophets of Baal, uh, and then after that, he had them all killed. Uh, what a victory that was for God's side. Uh, but what happened? When Jezebel heard about that, when Jezebel heard what, uh, uh, what Elijah had done, she sent a messenger to him and uh, to tell Elijah that he would be dead just like those prophets before the end of the day. Well, what did Elijah do? He ran for his life. And so he wasn't afraid of 850 false prophets of Baal, but he was afraid of one very mean woman. I'm sure there are other applications to be made there, but we'll just leave that to rest. But anyway, uh, Elijah fled into the desert. He was tired. He was afraid. Uh, and he just began to pray to God that God would take his life. Uh, do you think Elijah really wanted to die? No, I don't believe so. I mean, if he did, all he had to do was stay right there at Mount Carmel, and uh, Jezebel would have been happy to oblige him of that. But Elijah was tired. He was discouraged. He was looking for a simple, quick way to get out from under the pressure of his problems. And let me say this, folks. God is more concerned about our character than he is our comfort. Uh, we oftentimes want God to bail us out of trouble quickly. We don't like how that feels. And so we want God to bail us out quickly. But God wants to use our problems. He wants to use the circumstances we're dealing with to mold us, to shape us into the people he wants us to be so that we can accomplish his will. So God answered uh, Elijah, Elijah's prayer for deliverance, but not the way that Elijah had requested uh, when he was tired and depressed. Thankfully, he didn't. Uh, he told, uh, uh, God told Elijah, you go and anoint Jehu to be the new king of Israel. And then through Jehu, God brought judgment upon King Ahab and Jezebel. Now, just imagine if God answered all of our prayers immediately. Uh, we, like Elijah, would self-destruct, uh, especially when we're tired, especially when we're depressed. Uh, we pray some of the, the most selfish things. We would also use our prayer as a weapon of destruction. Uh, whenever anybody made us mad, we'd be, be praying for lightning bolts to come down and zap them. Uh, but, but persistent praying refines our prayers so that we can see what the will of God is and pray accordingly. Now, third, uh, prayer, uh, persistent praying also redirects our plans oftentimes. An example of this truth is found in the life of Zechariah and Elizabeth. Uh, one day, uh, you know the story when Zechariah, a priest, was burning incense in the temple. An angel appeared to him and told him that his prayer had been heard and his wife would bear a son. Now, Zechariah and Elizabeth had been praying for a son for a very long time. Uh, they had been persistently praying for years. When the angel says this to Zechariah, he responds in Luke chapter 1 and verse 18, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife well stricken in years. Now, this tells me that they had been praying for this uh, since they were still able to have children many, many years prior to this. Years of what seemed to be unanswered prayer. Uh, they had made Zechariah really slow to believe that God would answer. 
Now, they were past childbearing years, but they were persistently praying about this. And persistent prayers give God time to answer in his own way and in his own time. As someone has said, God always gives the best to those who leave the choice to him. Now, sometimes uh, God delays answering our request because he has something better in mind. Uh, suppose God had answered Zechariah and Elizabeth's prayers with a son when they first asked, when they were still able to bear children. He would have just been another boy. And he would have just been another man, and they would have just been another couple, and they would have been, nobody would have looked at that as a miraculous thing. They wanted to have a child in their youth, just like everybody else. But in answering their prayers, God had to redirect their plans. They had to raise a child in their latter years. God answered later, but folks, didn't he answer better? God had a proper plan, and it wasn't according to the plan that Elijah, or that uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth had. And folks, God has a good reason for every time he delays our prayers. He has a good reason for everything, everything that he does, folks. He, everything that he allows, for every, and, and just how long he allows it. Jesus told the story of the persistent widow to teach us that we should always pray and faint not. He also emphasizes this in Luke chapter 11 and verse 9, where he says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Now, those verbs, ask, seek, and knock, of course, they make an acronym that's kind of interesting, A-S-K, right? Ask. Uh, but they're also present tense verbs that denote continuous action. And so what the Lord is saying in that, in, that, in that verse is you need to keep on asking, keep on seeking, and keep on knocking. Are you dealing with financial difficulties? Keep on praying. Don't quit. Are you dealing with family problems? Keep praying. Don't quit. Are you depressed and discouraged? Just keep praying. Don't give up. God cares about your cares. He will answer them speedily, though he bears long with you. Jesus ended this parable by asking this question at the end of verse 8. <clears throat> he says, nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Praying in faith, folks, doesn't mean getting the answer right away or that we get what we ask when we ask for it. Praying in faith means that we trust God with the answer and we leave the timing to him. That's faith. That's faith in our God. So God bears long with us to remind us that we need him. God bears long with us to help us to have our prayers refined before him. And oftentimes God bears long with us to redirect our plans according to his will. But folks, we can always have faith that his delays are for our good and for his glory. And so I want to encourage you tonight. Have faith in the Lord and keep on praying. Keep on focusing upon him. Don't give up because God is with you even to the end of the age. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we do praise thee for the way that thou hast worked in our lives. And we praise thee for the, the promises that we have in thy word regarding prayer. Father, we live in a society that wants answers to our requests immediately. But oftentimes, thou doth bear long with us. And I pray, Lord, that we would be able to have faith in that, knowing that thou wilt answer speedily in thy good time, though thou doth bear long. I pray that as we take time even tonight to pray together, that the Spirit of God would lift our hearts together, that we would commune together in, in bringing our request to thee tonight. We love thee, Father. We pray for thy grace. We pray for thy will to be accomplished. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hope that you have a wonderful night.